All right, let's kick this off. So thanks all for joining today. This is uh, number six out of seven uh, for the Partner Summer Webinar Series. We want to share information, everything about Telium with you guys, and that way you guys know what's going on, what the latest details are. So I'm Sean Browning, heading up Partner Enablement here at Telium. And with me today, I have a very special guest, and I will introduce him momentarily. But before that, let's kick off into a little bit of housekeeping. Um, today's webinar will be recorded. So that way, if there are other people that are interested in seeing this but couldn't make it today, you can send them a link or, forward, or pass them over to the Telium website under the partner section. They'll see a recording of today's session. We do want to keep it interactive. Anytime you have questions, please use the Q&A panel like we've done in previous weeks. We'll all monitor those, uh, those questions and then either bring those up while we're having the conversation or towards the end of the, the webinar today. This does get technical sometimes, but today is going to be less technical and more business oriented or more for business users. How, how people, how customers are getting the value out of Telium. Um, so this is definitely going to be those for people that are familiar with display advertising and analytic strategy. But what we're going to do is understand a lot more about how we're going beyond typical traditional DMPs. How do we take the data and how do we take action on that? How do we really... Um, you know, unify our data across marketing channels in a real-time capacity. How are we putting all the technologies together to power that real-time enterprise? And with that, I really am excited to introduce Jay Calavis um, with Telium here, Chief Evangelist. He's a, a longtime Telium guy and knows he's in all of the customer conversations. He knows what's going on, what's driving the conversations. He's the guy that paints and builds the vision. So, Jay, welcome to the call today. I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Sean, and good, uh, good morning or afternoon, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here. Um, so, Sean asked me to, to come today uh, to share some of my experience with uh, the audience stream and real-time customer data platform across our customer base, um, to talk a little bit about our go-to-market strategy and, and uh, messaging, and most importantly, how our customers are seeing results and changing their business uh, with using a real-time customer data platform. A little bit about myself, I've been in digital marketing for just about 20 years, uh, was part of the, uh, the, uh, the website story and web analytics space, first ever SaaS platform uh, in analytics, uh, and then over to a few of the different marketing clouds, and then landed here at Telium to help launch uh, our SaaS offerings. Um, so really pleased to be here and looking forward to today's webinar. Hey Jay, you're, um, even though you're in California today, you're from the East Coast, right? You went to, um, is it George Mason University? Which, at, which school did you go to? I am a native New Yorker and I went to James Madison University in beautiful Harrisonburg, Virginia. That's right. Uh, and then over on the West Coast, and spectacular. Okay, so what do you have for us? Uh, what do you have for us today? What about our customers? What's going on? What are you hearing in your conversations? Yeah, so um, I think one of the things and themes that we hear quite a bit is that the tables are somewhat turned at this point. Most companies thought about their business as, uh, or from a from a perspective of centricity, focused on their products, their website, their mobile app, or even their store. Um, I think things have changed over the last few years. Yeah. Um, I hear thematically across the board that our customers believe that, that they are failing their customers. And the reason is really all the options that are out there. Too many channels to purchase through, too many choices thanks to the information age, um, too many distractions. There's so much going on. And of course, today's consumer is incredibly distracted uh, with their uh, nose always in a mobile device or a website or now looking at their Apple Watch every time it vibrates on their wrist. Yep. Uh, but ultimately, there's just too much data out there. And the data is overwhelming across the board for both customer and company. But ultimately, what we're hearing is that's not your customer's problem. That's our problem. Yep. So we need to figure out a way to take all of those data elements, all of those signals, all of those interactions across all of the different channels and to turn that into actionable insights and to take action on it. What we're, what we're saying is that today there's a customer mandate that's set forth. Without the customer telling us, we know that in order to be relevant in today's market, data needs to be real time about our customers. We need to not be looking at day or week delayed insights 
and then use that to create the message that we're going to engage a customer with. We need to be using what's happening right now in conjunction with what we've learned historically about a customer in order to engage them with the right message at the right time. Furthermore, customers are on a multitude of devices and they're also in a multitude of channels. So when we think about the channel that we're engaging, we, we really talk about there being a customer channel. And that customer can be in a store, a mobile app, a website, a call center, a stadium, a vehicle, in their home. The customer channel is what we're focused on. And so by being cross-device and omni-channel, we can constantly be listening and learning about our customers and engaging them across all of those different engagement channels. And that will lead to the, the most relevant messaging and engagement possible. So if we, if we relate to this mandate and we try to comply with it, what can we do? Well, the first theme that we talk about is moving away from traditional segmentation. So Sean, you and I both came from the web analytics uh, space. You were at Web Trends, and I was over at Website Story, and uh, and those were good times. And you know, we were we were blazing a trail with segmentation reports. And these were reports that put people into buckets based on uh, singular behaviors, and then we gave our customers the ability to analyze the behaviors of those users. And that's kind of what we call traditional batch processed segmentation. Mm -hmm. Very rigid groupings of users. Dynamic action and segmentation is a brand new category. The notion being that we can learn about customers in real time and based on that, place them into net new dynamic segments that ebb and flow throughout the customer journey. So one user might have a thousand different attributes that have been either learned or that we're currently learning about them in real time. And based on those, the users can be placed into a multitude of different segments and as such, may very well trigger a multitude of actions. So that, that relevancy comes to the surface when we have real-time insights about a user. And we can create a rules engine that takes advantage of all of that data that we're learning and have learned about our customers. Yeah, I think back in the, back in the old web analytics days, one of the Achilles heels was that they were so cookie oriented, right? They're so so focused on, the, on analyzing a particular cookie that when you did create a segment, they're kind of stuck in the mud now. That cookie is associated with that segment and you're just done. There's, there's no way to really update that or improve upon that, at least not in a dynamic way, right? So where we're doing more of the visitor-based analysis today, when a customer changes their their aspect, right? They're they're no longer they're kind of reading some articles, but they haven't really subscribed to the New York Times just yet, right? So at that moment, they become you know a browser or a looker over to a subscriber. You know that's dynamic action. But I think the key there that's you know way beyond what the old traditional analytics was was a, a visitor uh, visitor centric type of analysis in a dynamic real time capacity. What do you think, Jay? Is that does that seem about right? Yeah, you're hitting the nail on the head, and uh, and furthermore, that's how most DMPs work, right? You qualify yeah. for a set number of static segments, yeah. and that's the end of the story for the most part, right? So, and of course, all platforms are attempting to evolve closer to a first-party approach, but traditionally, you know, cookie-based segmentation is the way that things were done, not persistent visitor centricity, whereas the first-party data is causing a user to evolve in real time and then qualify for a multitude of segments in a dynamic nature, yeah. both in and out, uh, up and down, and then actions being overlaid on top of that dynamic segment action. I would still say that those traditional DMPs though are probably, I, back to that stuck in the mud idea, sometimes you only have access to update those those details from those DMPs at the end of the day, right? So it's not the real-time capacity. Sometimes it's end of day or some some lagging type of analysis or um, you know when they're re-upping or when they're trying to, to correlate the data. Aren't they doing that mostly at the end of the day? Isn't that something that's a difference between Telium and the typical DMPs is the, the time to action? Um, what's your thought there on the traditional DMP difference? Yeah, so... <clears throat> Pretty much all DMPs are at least day delayed from the yeah. point where they identify a user with a cookie and the time it takes them to then match that cookie up against the cookie pool, associate them with those 
pre-configured segments or buckets yeah. and then and then the, the being capable to do something with that so right. it's a, a tremendous delay when it comes to the actionability or the the time to segment or the time to action um, systems that are built from the ground up to be real time are the future it's the way that we'll need to engage our customers that's us exactly cool all right Great dynamic point. real time i like it yeah so so how do we get there? It's a really great topic. So, you know, we kind of, we've coined this, this term of the 24 hour flu and it's the flu that plagues the entire digital marketing industry. How do we move from a day to a second in order to act on what we're learning or have learned about our customers? Well, you know, we, we, we look at this holistically and we take a big step back and we define things um, from the perspective of a data supply chain. So, um, when you think about the, the customer data platform versus traditional data warehouses or point solutions, the time it takes to collect data, to, to put data in through a processing uh, uh, application, and then to come up with insights, and then eventually take action on it, it can take a long, long time. Right. Now, some vendors are able to act in real time, but traditionally, Customers are collecting data, correlating data, segmenting data, and then feeding that back into their vendor mix in order to engage with some kind of a message. So that's, that's a traditional data supply chain. And by the way, many of those supply chains are not omni-channel and multi-device. Yeah. Uh, if you're lucky, they are. And that process of trying to correlate all those data sources can be incredibly time-consuming and, and sometimes not just improbable, but impossible, right? Matching disparate data sets can be a real challenge. And that's why you see these BI and EDW uh, budgets uh, blowing up. Millions. You've got to have lots of processing power, lots of hardware, and lots of smart people behind the scenes attempting to achieve that. If we modernize the data supply chain into a real-time data supply chain, meaning that rather than doing all of the segmentation and processing on the back end, we do it on the front end. So that's one of the neat things that a, that a customer's data um, platform brings to the table is the ability to do all of that correlation and all of that segmentation and all of that enrichment at the point of data collection, not after the fact. And so by doing that, you speed up the real-time data supply chain, right? You, you look at a real-time capability to learn and to act on customers. And Jay, if I'm if, if I'm going to relate this to the the audience on the call, our partners, you know, companies, businesses, they get this, they need this. Everything from getting the fast interaction all the way to to interacting and integrating with with EDWs, enterprise data warehouses, their business intelligence systems, and so forth. But they don't have the time or the resources or the staff. And if they do have the staff, then they once those people have those newfound skills, of course, then they go off and find a higher paying job. So it's hard to retain those people. So these companies are outsourcing or relying on agencies increasingly um, to do this kind of thing, to pull together data scientists and to pull in the technologies and to put together a puzzle, if you will, to say, okay, we're going to take this, we're going to have these campaigns with this technology, this kind of a DMP, we'll have this data warehouse, we'll, and, and so agencies increasingly, I'm having this on a weekly basis, agencies calling up going, what do you have? Because it seems like TLM is more than tag management and We've got this big task on our plate. Our customers are asking for this, and we don't know what to do. So I, I know this is really relating this data supply chain relates to agencies and partners because we we fit and, and solve many of those challenges, the, the fast nature of the capability, and also being agnostic to plug into technologies. I think this is, this is so relevant to our partners um, because we meet so many of the gaps that can't be found out in the marketplace today. Are you hearing the same thing in your customer conversations? We are, and we point our customers in, in the uh, direction of our agency partners yeah. who are up to speed on how to leverage a, a customer data supply chain and, yeah. uh, and a customer data platform because think of the vastness of strategies that need to be applied in order to really embrace this next generation of customer data. Um, you know, it's not our job to come up with the segmentation strategy and the cross-channel campaign strategy. What we want to do is create, um, you know, really disruptive technology that solves huge problems and put it in the hands of our agency partners 
so that they can apply the strategies and they can be the ones to be the trusted advisor. Uh, we're the technologists, they're the strategists, and together um, we, we see, we've, we're seeing huge results. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, make, make the partner the hero. And that way they're solving all the customer challenges and customer needs. But yeah, we're hearing this both on the agency and direct sales side and also on the direct sales side. And I'm looking forward to some of the... Um, the use cases and also the, the takeaways that you hear in your conversations. I want to learn more about how some of the customers are using this to their advantage. Well, great. Let's delve in. Let's talk a little bit about um, how our customers are leveraging yes. a real-time customer data platform uh, and the results that they're seeing. So I'm going to begin with uh, a company called Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com, if you're not familiar with them, is a, a genealogy company. So they're out there trying to sell uh, the vision of you learning about your your family history. Um, and it's a real big challenge to do if you're not using a service like Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com happens to be one of the most early innovators in terms of adopting uh, audience stream. So one of the things that they were looking for help with was to streamline the process of collecting, analyzing, enriching and then acting on data. So they had a data supply chain that looked a lot like a traditional technology stack. Yeah. They, had, they had a campaign management tool, they had an email marketing tool, they had an analytics tool, and they had their own customer data warehouse. And all of these different systems were cobbled together. And so they'd be collecting data, of course, from their website or their mobile app, that data would then go through a segmentation tool, which would then go through a campaign management tool, which would then go to an email marketing tool, which then would eventually send out the actual email to their customer. And this is very common. If you have a highly dynamic email marketing program, there's typically a multitude of steps that need to happen in order for that, to, that email to get out. And technically speaking, we identified 13 steps for Ancestry.com pre-audience stream of the customer data platform. Yep. Um, and they were getting a pretty low re-engagement rate uh, because the message was so stale. Um, so that was the main use case we initially solved for. Um, the result after instituting audience stream was a dramatic improvement in the time to action. So what they did is they removed all of those interior steps and they created a direct connection between the customer data platform and their email marketing engine. So think of the customer data platform as the rules engine and the brain that's triggering the execution engine, which may yeah. be an email marketing tool, or it may be a display ad tool, or it may be a search or social tool. All of these different ecosystem partners, the MarTech landscape, if you will, yeah. become the execution partners, and Telium becomes the intelligence and the trigger engine. And so post audience stream integration, they were sending out email so fast, meaning within seconds, that we actually had to add a feature to delay the emails because they were scaring the heck out of their customers. <laughs> it was too fast. Yeah. So that's, a, that's, a, that's a good problem to have, right, Sean? It is, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's doing it so well. You're not, I mean, it gets to that, that point where you're talking about where are the rules living, right? Are the rules at the end of the process where you have to get all of your data and then apply the rules and go through 13 steps or just like you're talking about, Jay, where you, if we can be that at the beginning, right up front, where you put, you apply the rules and everything happens right then according to the rule set, kind of that forward looking method, <clears throat> but then, then you've got everything there correlated, but then everything's happening so quickly because all the rules are in place that you're scaring your audience because, because we're almost, you know, got our ESP engine, our, our, uh, you know, predictive analysis happening too quickly, too spooky, big brother type of stuff. It's, it's, it is pretty funny, actually. Yeah, uh, but real time is good to have at your fingertips for when you need it. Absolutely. Um, and they saw a dramatic improvement in re-engagement from those email marketing campaigns. That's a big lift that they saw. Now, sure. they didn't stop there. They had another huge project, which was this notion of what they called hints. And hints are brand new insights that they found out about your specific genealogy. So they have a group of, uh, of laborers that are updating records into their system. Yeah. And what they're doing is they're associating net new insights to profiles that they've built on their back end. Now, the way they used to do this is that they would take all those files, they put into a back end data warehouse, they process and analyze them, and then they figure out who in their system had net new hints that had been found, meaning new insights. 
they would then feed that into a display ad vendor and that display ad vendor would then go out find the, the customers and show them a banner ad with a little leaf in the corner of it with the number of new hints very compelling huh. but it took forever to get that process done sometimes upwards of a week to get the data into their system then back out into the display ad engine huh. helium is a real-time solution for this they pu they push that data into audience stream audience stream augments and enriches the visitor profiles with the number of net new hints in real time that goes out to their DSP and that DSP then begins retargeting that user with that very specific message and they've seen dramatic improvement in conversion from that campaign as well so great lots group. of lots of great things being done by our friends over at ancestry.com very smart group I love that yep and that that ties in with you know taking action on the data and, and feeding the data through an action system. And so one of the things we'll talk about next week, just to put it out, there are some of those connectors that we have inside of Audience Stream to know what they do, how they work, and, and that way you, know, you take action on the data, especially in conversations partners having with customers. They can build that vision based on the additional insight they'll have from next week. So very cool, Jay. That sounds like a fun one. Yeah. So let's move on uh, to our friends over at American Eagle. So American Eagle, um, they're a clothing outfitter, uh, traditional brick and mortar with a strong web and mobile app presence. Um, what they wanted to do was to dip their toe into the realm of omni-channel. So boy, is omni-channel an overused word, right? Awesome. And, uh, along, along with Internet of Things and a whole slew of other terms. But yeah. they were really interested in how they could take online behaviors and profiles and insights and use that to influence offline behavior within their stores. They've got a really, um, really in tune buying community for their target market. And what they wanted to do, it was to take in store or online insights about what people were buying and what people were looking at and pass that into an in store experience. So before Audience Stream and the, and the customer data platform, this was just impossible. They didn't have a way to do it. They had basically two different data sets, one for in-store purchases, which was traditional POS data, and the other one was their online data. So no centralized profile, and, and what they were wanting to do was to prove out a model so that they could use online behaviors to increase upsell opportunities in-store. So we embarked upon an exciting journey with them. We, they, be, they first and foremost created a, an app for their in-store um, uh, their in-store uh, customers. Yeah. So each one of the sales agents within the store now has an iPad app where they can bring up the profile of that customer. So they ask the customer, would you like me to look at your customer record? We are fueling that platform with the online behaviors and insights about what they've bought and what they've browsed. Maybe they abandoned the cart. Anything they want that happens in the online realm gets pushed into the offline experience. Through that, They've now have completely unified messaging between online and offline for a consistent sales uh, and brand experience. And they're targeting an average of 20 to 30% in average upsell across the board by connecting with their customers and speaking to their specific brand affinity, to their product affinity, and to get them the right product, the right offer at the right time while they're in the store. So really, really compelling stuff there. That one's amazing because when I when I first heard of this, I confused it with online only, right? Because we're so used to hearing about online, right? Yeah, of course you could do cross selling online. Sure, if you're interested in product A, we can we can show cross sell or you know display something else that's complementary. But what I realized later was this is happening in store as an in store experience, understanding who the person is in the store, and then taking all of their different data points. I want to get into this, uh, ask you a question about this in just a second, Jay. So if we take in those additional data points to improve that personal experience in the store face-to-face -face interaction, what about that point of sale data, right? POS, point of sale. Um, so talk, can you, can you elaborate a little bit more on some of the point of sale or other uh, elements that can be integrated into that visitor profile? Yeah, so uh, it's a great question, Sean. Um, so the customer data platform is bilateral in the way that it can receive and send data. So data goes in, data goes out. If we want to create a system that is truly going to be the single source of truth about our customers, 
we need to include all sources of data, right. online, offline, off-site, first party, second party, third party. Right. So we built the platform from the ground up to be able to receive customer data from any and all disparate channels, data sources, databases, whatever it might be. And we have a, a multitude of different tools in order to achieve that. The most popular way to do that, because we're dealing with somewhat of a, um, of, of a, uh, a legacy environment when it comes to offline data, is the ability to take data, put it into an FTP site, and then have audience stream go and source that data and consume it on a regular basis. So that's what we're seeing as the most popular method for people to go through and get that, that point of sale or omni-channel data into the system. Yep, and that was that was one question that just came across, right? Tying in the point of sale data. And I do want to highlight one thing um, for those that are on the line is, you know, we're not just pulling in data from all kinds of different directions just for the sake of integrating data. Um, we are centralizing and, and focusing in on a, a particular join key, which is that visitor. Who is the person, right? So if you can bring in supplementary data from a point of sale system, we have to know who the person is. So there's got to be some customer identifier, a login ID, something that says this is Jay, this is Sean, based on what we know about that individual, based on the customer ID or some other means or tactic, so that we can we can tie together that offline data, the online data, and other records, but it's got to have that centralized key to understand that it's the person because it's all visitor-based analysis when you're taking offline data and integrating it into audience stream. So it has to have that, that personalized join key. That's what I want to highlight there. Yeah, you know, and, and we wanted to make sure that we were modernizing that approach as well. For us personally, um, we have a patented approach of, of being able to associate many different unique identifiers to one individual customer. So yeah. Uh, and something I we call sometimes the Telium wallet. So you might have 10, 15, 20 different things that can be associated with a customer. Maybe their email address, their customer ID, their loyalty ID, maybe even their social sign-on via Gigya. You may have first-party cookies or um, attribution vendors that have dropped unique identifiers, maybe even things like an order ID. Any of these things can be used to correlate not just disparate data sources like point-of-sale data, but also that's how we stitch devices together. Yeah. We're looking for anything within the wallet that's a match between data sets as well as devices. So we're constantly doing that in real time in order to create this single source of truth. Great. So let's move on. Um, so Deckers is a, uh, a large apparel and footwear company. Uh, in, in, uh, in, in general, they're using us across all of their brands but they found tremendous value on one specific test that they did. So uh, once again, looking to modernize uh, their retargeting efforts. And so this was once again through the email channel and they had the same issue that Ancestry.com did. They were dealing with a 24 to 48 hour delay in order to get a retargeting email with the products that were abandoned back to the customer. And this, in this specific amp, uh, example, they were, this was for the UGG, Brand. So those wonderful, large, comfy uh, boots that, uh, that the ladies wear. And it sounds like they got some men's product these days as well. So good for us. Maybe yep. Sean, you and I can get ourselves a pair of Uggs. I know. <laughs> so, um, so they implemented Audience Stream and saw something absolutely incredible. So one campaign with one brand, they were able to dramatically improve the conversion on that retargeting campaign because the campaign was now more relevant. We were, we were providing a tremendous amount of customer insight as well as product relevancy, as well as getting it in front of their customer within 60 minutes. So within one hour, this email was received, um, incredibly relevant retargeting, and a tremendous ROI with just one simple campaign. I think everybody's got that challenge though. Everybody's got that you know, low conversion rate, the retargeting's not good, it's the end of the day or the next day type of action. I mean, that's, that's, I think everybody's got that problem, but I think that's also low hanging fruit. We could solve that one so quickly because we've got so many use cases, you know, Deckers is one of those, but everybody can hit that one in very short order. So I think what we've got is on the back end for our uh, account management team and the implementation team, we've got playbooks. So just so the partners know, these playbooks are ways of getting quick action out of the technology. So not only do we have, yeah, we have audience stream, let's build a conversation and let's go scope what the requirements are 
from scratch every single time. But what we have are playbooks that help skip right to the value, right? What can we do in, in three hours or three days very, very quickly? How do we get value out of the system? Because this, this retargeting technology or this retargeting uh, strategy right here, everybody wants it. It's not that hard, especially if they apply Telium. So with Audience Stream, I think that's kind of a quick win, isn't it, Jay? Sure is. I agree with you completely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and the nice thing about um, customer data platforms is that, you know, we're talking about individual channels, right? So email or display ad. But in reality, with a customer data platform, you create your segments or your audiences once and then relay them across all of your digital marketing cha uh, channels. Yeah. So one single source of truth can fuel all these other tools. So, you know, we're, we're enabling the, the, the ecosystem of, of technology partners to do what they do best, right? Email marketing providers, they, they create beautiful templates and send out uh, email um, and manage preferences really, yep. really well. Yep. Um, you know, DSPs and display ad networks, they can find visitors really well and put a message in front of them. Uh, and, you know, live chat vendors can... Uh, put an agent in front of a sales rep uh, or in front of a prospect or customer really, yeah. really well. But we can fuel all of those tools with better intelligence and give them a better um, time to segment and time to action. So we're fueling the ecosystem with better data and more timely um, actions and triggers. I think it gets right to where you were saying, where do you put the rules? You put the rules at the end of the system in the action engines like email and, and uh you know, service providers and segmentation engines, if it's too late. By the time the data get to those individual siloed technologies, um, you know, the rules are in the wrong place. You definitely need to put the rules up front in audience stream. And then those rules, those segments apply in, on a consistent basis to all the technologies. But that's a big takeaway I have from this conversation, Jay, is, is where do the rules live? At the begin, up at the front or at the end makes a big difference. Sure does. So, um, Another great use case, our friends over at Beachbody uh, here in Southern California, um, they were doing generic retargeting through display ads. So they were basically saying, well, gosh, if you, uh, if you bought any product from us, we know that, you, that we have other products and we want to get in front of you and keep our brand in front of your eyeballs. Yeah. Um, they weren't seeing very good conversion or even click through. Uh, and it was a pretty delayed ability for them to get in front of a customer once they had purchased the product. So we modernized that entire process. We started building out affinity-based retargeting campaigns, if you kind of micro-segmentation. Um, and we were doing it in real time. So we were saying, we know what the affinities are be between buying this product and other products. Based on that, we're gonna create this affinity-based display ad retargeting campaign, and we're gonna push it out in real time when a user buys a product. So immediately we're gonna get the wheels turning about these affinity proven upsell opportunities. Um, so a really quick use case, um, but achieved incredible results. So seven figure incremental revenue as they measured it. Um, so just immediately impactful simply by using data and using it in real time to create the right message at the right time. Uh, and, and we created an incredible result for each body. So this is saying that since Jay Calavis signed up and graduated from the P90X Academy, that they t retargeted you for the 10-minute workout. And so you went ahead and re-upped on an additional product. So they came out with P90X, the third version, and, and you just keep buying based on your previous actions and activities. Is that is that what I hear, Jay? That's exactly right. And yes, I'm ripped. You I'm are free of, amazingly ripped. cut. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the, the nature of the use case. And, and one last one here from one of our customers. Yeah. Uh, Dover Saddlery. So wanted to highlight maybe not a traditional large company that you've heard of. Dover Saddlery is a small company in the Northeast and they sell horse products. And, you know, and they were actually using us for tag management and they saw the customer data platform and they thought to themselves, well, we've got some pretty high ticket items on our website as well as some recurring items, right? So they sell really high end horse saddles, but they also sell blankets and horse feed and horse shoes and all sort of horse stuff. So they instituted Audience Stream and they were looking to figure out how they could better um, convince customers to buy the high ticket items, but also get people to enter um, more of a recurring product purchase cycle. So they started with a static website, a very generic approach to customer engagement, and a really low converting website. They didn't know what they didn't know. Put Audience Stream in place within three weeks. 
they paid for the entire platform. Awesome. They sold a lot of horse saddles, Sean. <laughs> How do you do that? That's a... Uh... And I can't imagine what the postage and the shipping costs on shipping a saddle across from the Northeast down to San Diego, but that's pretty amazing though. I mean, it, it, this goes to show that you don't have to be the, a super large enterprise to get value out of this. If you have customers, you need a customer data platform. That's right. That's, that's the way it is. And even this you know, somewhat uh, stodgy old school type of a company, I mean, their offices are in a horse barn, you know? I mean, it's a real, it, it just goes to show that customers are customers and with better data and better relevancy and better time to action, yep. anything is possible. It's true. It's true. It's hugely valuable. It doesn't matter what the size of the company. There's the value is there and it, and it can pay for itself sure <clears throat> can. and so forth. Everything. Yep. One last one. And this is just a fun one. Um, mm. So, you know, here at Telium, uh, we eat our own filet. We like to say not our own dog food. No, no. And, uh, and at our, our customer forum, so we have Digital Velocity, both uh, North America as well as Europe, uh, we had some fun with our customers and partners. Um, we set up a real-world action environment. We set up uh, iBeacons throughout our entire event as well as all of the post-event parties. So we had iBeacons all over the place, and then we embedded audience stream into our mobile app. So when you got to the event, you downloaded the mobile app and you put some information about yourself. Things like, well, what, what was your first concert? And, uh, and things like that. Well, that information was collected and put into a real-time profile. And then the app was connecting with the iBeacons throughout the event. So we were collecting data about where our customers and, and partners were spending their time. So as they continued through the day, we were building up data and we were using that data to, to engage with them. We were sending push notifications, we were sending email, and we even used the data to create some awards. So we actually gave out gift cards and surfboards and all sorts of stuff for different accomplishments. Things like longest time at the bar. So that's a real, real accomplishment to be proud of. But you know, we also sent Starbucks gift cards to those folks that we thought might be a little bit uh, red-eyed in the morning. Yep. Um, you know, but we didn't just use the data for fun. We fed the data back to our partners who invested in staying in our, um, our, our vendor form. So we told them what the type of uh, customers were that were spending time at their booth. So what was the ROI that you got from being at the Telium customer conference? And then ultimately we got this data back into Splunk we used and we ran reports on it and showed those reports off at the end of our customer conference. So, you know, I end with a really um, innovative use case to show the true reach of a customer data platform. Yeah. As I, as I said in the beginning of the presentation, it doesn't matter whether you're in a website, a mobile app, a store, a stadium, a venue, your car, or in your home. Because of the reach of the customer data platform and the advent of mobile libraries and integrated devices, we can c capture data and act on data anywhere a customer is it's true it's true you know now jay with all of those um with all those use cases all the conversations you're having everything seems to be centered around audience stream why why is it audience stream um, why is it getting so much attention um and and is iq kind of uh you know the tag management piece is that getting glossed over is that still needed what's your take there yeah, so um, so Telium IQ was built with purpose as a as a data centric tag management solution that also has over 850 turnkey vendor integrations. Telium IQ has really become the intelligence layer for the customer data platform. Think of Telium IQ as the way to instrument your event level or visit level data strategy. So that's the hooks that go into all of the data that will then get collected and enriched by audience stream. So Telium IQ is essential to the instrumentation and ongoing iteration of a customer data platform. Yep. Anything that you can create a hook into can then be consumed by our real-time profiling, segmentation, and action engine. So, so Telium IQ is incredibly relevant in the conversation. And furthermore, everything audience stream does gets pushed back up into Telium IQ. So think about um, and those of you familiar with our approach to tag management, we create a data layer. And that data layer is a combination of JavaScript variables and the data object and cookie IDs and all sorts of things that get defined in the web browser or a mobile app. 
Well, we take customer level attributes and insights and we push that back up into the data layer, thus enriching the data layer. And that data now becomes available to the 850 plus turnkey vendors that we've worked so hard to build out with, uh, for. Yep. So the two work really, really well uh, in combination. Now, with that being said, Audience Stream is available without Telium IQ. Um, most customers and partners see value though once we show the the, the, the logic behind integrating them together. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's tremendous synergy between the two. And by the way, Sean, we didn't even talk about data access, which is the end of the customer data supply chain, which is, gosh, you've got all this customer data. Wouldn't it be great for our, our data scientists and our BI team to get that clean, correlated, semi-structured or structured data set mm -hmm. and flow it directly into a, a data warehouse. And, and we now offer that as well. But that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, exactly. We covered that in, uh, was it uh, two webinars, I believe it was. So last week was Mondo and the visitor stitching. And then the, the week before that was Chris Slovak and touching on that data access. And actually, very few slides. We just got as granular and deep into the data and even Tableau. Um, that we could possibly get to see the data in action once it was passed through audience stream to data access into a, a reporting application. So we covered that one. It was really huge. I think that was week uh, week three, probably. That's so great. I, I've, Jay, I've managed to work all the questions in conversationally, right? So there's been several questions, and I've asked those to you throughout the conversation. So they're, uh, we're running... Well, actually, we don't have any more questions. So all the all the four questions that we had, I've we've tackled and and uh, accomplished and achieved there. So I've got a couple of takeaways. Number one is, we apparently are the solution for the 24 hour flu. <laughs> so I like the way you put that. Uh, number two is, you want to put the rules up front as opposed to um, later on down the pipeline, right? So so yes. There are different technologies that create segmentation. Email action engines have their own segments and so forth, but those segments don't talk to each other. So you know, based on what we've talked about today, you want to put the rules up at the front. You build those in inside of Telium and Audience Stream to build those rule sets to push out equally across all the technologies so they're all working in concert together. And then the third thing I got as a takeaway is that uh, I'm going to put Uggs on the Christmas list for you, Jay, because... Uh, we need to work on our Uggs collection. I'm looking forward to that. It's <laughs> going to be a very, very merry holiday for me. <laughs> yes, it will. So, hey, Sean, what's going on next week? So next week we've got, you know, like we're talking about taking action on all of the data inside of Audience Stream. I think the one thing we have left um, to cover as far as the facet um, that we haven't really gotten into so much is the Audience Stream connectors, right? If if IQ tells you what people are doing and Audience Stream tells you who's doing it. Well, inside of Audience Stream, if you click on Act and look at the connectors, well, what are all of those little tiles that are there? Some are email, some are CRM, some are, are Splunk and analysis, some are media math and, and other types of action engines. But we want to go into greater depth and detail next week about the Audience Stream connectors to show how this real-time data can really um, move through the system and then make everything happen uh, flawlessly, effectively. So I'm going to touch on the audience stream connectors with John Tyler Grant next week. Well, that's fantastic. That looks, that, that sounds to be a great, uh, a great session. So thanks so much for having me, Sean, and to all of our partners. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, my name is Jay Calavis. If you want to reach out to me, have any questions, I'm available at J that's J A Y at telium.com. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'm also available on Twitter. That's at, Jay Calibus, J-A-Y, and then last name Calibus. Thanks, Jay, for, for being part of the webinar series and being the subject matter expert this week. And uh, really, really, really do appreciate it. So thanks, Jay, for attending and presenting today. And then thanks, partners, for attending. And uh, that's a wrap for this week. And look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks again, Jay. Take care, Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Thanks, all. All right. Bye-bye.